Before you start a session, you should think about the needs that you're going to have for that type of work. For instance, right now I'm editing voiceover, so I don't really need the functions of either post-production or music work. So what I might want to do is go into my view menu and just change the way that I'm looking at things. This area up here is called the rulers. I have a lot of rulers up here that is taking up valuable screen space. Bars and beats I don't really need for voiceover work. Minutes and seconds, that might be valuable. Time code, feet and frames, these are things that are more useful for post-production. So I can get rid of these things one of a couple of ways. This right here is my ruler view. And if I click on it, it gives me check boxes that allow me to choose exactly what I want to look at here. Or there's another way I can go to the view menu. The view menu is there for options for windows that you already see, but you may want to see different things within them. I can change the rulers here as well. So there's usually one of two places when you're changing a view of something. Usually there's a little grid and you can also access those things in the view menu. Another thing that I might want to change is I might want to change the things that I'm looking at on my tracks. So right now I'm looking at my inserts and I'm looking at my inputs and outputs here. You can change that by clicking on this little grid, which is my edit view selector. So if I click this and pull it down, then it allows me to see different things that I can look at. I like to make comments sometimes where I might store the name of a performer, I might store the microphone that I used, different things like that. Again, you could find this in the view menu. You can go to edit window views and then it offers you the exact same choices. One other thing in the view menu, if you have a lot of tracks and you wanna see all of them in your mix window, you can go to the narrow mix window feature of the view menu or you can hit Option Command M on a Mac. You have similar options on the mix window, but it's down at the bottom this time. So it allows me to show all the same things that I would see before. A few additional things that you have in the mix window, you also have access to the EQ curve. The EQ curve will show any EQ plugins that are on that particular track. If I move this, it also moves in this instantaneous view I have here. The neat thing about this is if you have multiple EQs, it will sum the two of them together. Another thing that you can see here is delay compensation. Sometimes if I have a lot of plugins, I wanna see how long it's taking to go through that particular plugin. So for instance, this track with Auto-Tune now has a delay of about 2,600 samples, which, has to be made up for on the other tracks with delay compensation. You should leave delay compensation on in all of your sessions. This can be found in the options menu, which is another good one for customizing your session to your needs. On the Pro Tools test, anytime you get a question that says, how do you toggle something on and off? How does delay compensation get toggled on and off? How do you turn on and off dynamic transport? that is going to be found in the options menu. Loop playback and loop record are in here. The different types of record types. Edit window scrolling is another thing that you should set up. Scrolling options just changes how Pro Tools handles redrawing the waveform after the cursor goes off the screen. There are situations in your Pro Tools in this case, it's no scrolling. It doesn't do anything. It shows me the waveform that was there when I started playing back. After playback, I hit play, moves off screen, and then after I stop it, it goes to where I stopped. Page, this is the one that I tend to use. There are situations in your Pro Tools. When it gets to the end of the page, it redraws it from where it left off. Another type is continuous, which is in some there versions of Pro Tools, where it's constantly scrolling. And the last option that you see sometimes is center playhead. 
This shows up as test questions on Pro Tools sometimes. If you ever see a blue line in the center of your screen going all the way down, or if you have a track armed and you're recording, it will show up as red. Solo mode is another thing that you would find in options. This is something that people have pretty strong feelings about. Right now, this is in something called XOR. It only allows me to have one button soloed at a time. I can hold down Shift and then have multiple ones soloed, but by default, when I click on one, another one cancels it out. I prefer latch mode. That allows me to have multiple solo buttons going at once. The last type is called momentary. You can only have something in solo when you're holding the button down, and then as soon as you release, it goes away. There's a few other things that you need to think about with solo. A solo in place is like the standard solo. This is called a destructive solo. If you solo, that means it's going to cancel the other tracks out. It's going to temporarily mute them. That's what solo in place is. That's the type of solo that most people generally want. There is another type of solo called after fade listen or pre fade listen. When you solo like this, sound still goes to the outputs. The solo goes to a separate bus, which is defined in the I.O. window. Think about this like a DJ at a live show. You have the sound that's going out to the crowd, but they might want to cue up a record on their headphones, so they need to have a separate bus to do that. That's what after fade listen, pre fade listen is, because it's going out a completely different output. There is a volume control. To activate it, you hold down the command key and then click on the solo button, and then you can control the level. 